Okay, perfect. So hi everyone. Um, my name is Abby and I'm a third year medical student at UCB. Uh, for the last six months I've been doing research with uh, Professor Jeff Lambert's team and um, I'm here to present our findings on a study that we conducted on patients presenting to an infectious disease clinic with um, Lyme-like symptoms and we were looking at the instance of uh, tick-borne infections and co-infections. So uh, just to give you an outline of my presentation, we're going to start with a background with some information on TBIs. We're going to look at the methods and that it was a retrospective analysis. We're going to look at the results, which was incidents of TBIs and co-infections, some background history on our cohort and their response to treatment. We're going to do a summary of the overview of the results and then a conclusion, which is a summary of our major findings. So um, in terms of background, so and the instance of TBIs from, and transmission is on the rise in Europe. And this is because of changes in ecosystem and because of climate change. And in Ireland, uh, Lyme Borreliosis is the most predominant TBI, but there are other infections um, and co-infections associated with ticks, such as Babesia, Bartonella, Elerichia and Rickettsia. And the objective of the study was to investigate the instance of TBIs and co-infections within a cohort of 301 patients. So on to the methods. So as I said, this is a retrospective analysis of 301 patients who presented to an infectious disease clinic with Lyme-like symptoms. A uh, subgroup was made of enzyme immunoassay confirmed patients, and they were further classified based on infection type. And the following infections are here. So we did Borrelia, Babesia, Bartonella, Elerichia, and Rickettsia. And then we analyzed the incidence of TBI infections and co-infections. So the results. From our cohort of 301 patients, 139 or 46% of patients were antibody positive. We had mono infections and combined infections. So the mono infections, this is the one that had the highest incidence, specifically Borrelia. So going very slowly, but they'll appear eventually. So as you can see with the red star, so 82 patients or 59% of our cohort had a mono infection specifically with Borrelia. The second highest instance was seen for a combined infection. So it was for patients with Borrelia and a combined infection with either Babesia, Bartonella, Elerichia, or Rickettsia. We also had some mono infections that did not include Borrelia at all, with specifically Rickettsia having the highest incident. It was eight patients or 5.75% of our cohort. We then went on to do some background information on our cohort. Everyone filled out a questionnaire prior to diagnosis. And these are some of the facts we found from it. If it comes up. So we asked our patients, do they recall getting a tick bite? And 52.5% of patients actually don't recall it. We then went on to ask them, did they um, experience a bullseye rash with 46.8% saying no, and 21.6% being unsure. We then asked them, have they ever gone to their GP with their symptoms? And 83.5% of patients said that they did go to their GP. And when we asked them if they got antibiotics, only 51 point or 51% got antibiotics uh, with their symptoms. We then went on follow up. So we went to follow up our patients um, in Professor Jack uh, Lambert's clinic. And he, um, so 117 returned to clinic. So at T0, so it was before they received any sort of treatment, we asked them, in the month prior to your diagnosis, how would you rate how you were feeling about your health? One being very poor and 10 being very well. So the majority of patients rated, rated their symptoms of three. And as you can see here on the graph, the graph is skewed to the, to the left with symptoms rating their symptoms very, very poor. We then treated them with anti, or Jack, Ryan, or Jack Lambert treated the, um, the patients with antibiotics for two months, so this is T1. And we asked them then, do they still experience Lyme life symptoms? 97% of patients said they still experienced symptoms. However, they were improving. So here's our graph of T1. We asked our patients, how are you feeling today regarding your Lyme like symptoms? One being very poor, 10 being very well. And as you can see here, the majority of patients are rating their symptoms as a five, which shows improvement from T0. We then followed them up at another visit for T2. 
99 patients returned, and this was three months later, and we continued their antibiotic treatment. So you're gonna see graph one here, just, or T1, just to show you the improvement. We in, asked our patients, did they still experience Lyme-like symptoms? 96% of patients said they did. And then when we asked them today, how are you feeling about your Lyme-like symptoms? One being very poor, 10 being very well. The majority rate is of a six or above, which shows that our graph is skewing to the right and the patients are improving. We also went on to look at the three most common symptoms that patients were complaining of, and they were pain, pain, fatigue, and neurological symptoms. So at T1 to T2, so this is T1, they've already had two months of antibiotic treatment, and T2, they've had three more months. We are seeing an overall decrease in the symptoms that people are experiencing. However, they're completely going away. And fatigue is the symptom that seems to be persisting the most, with only a 17.9% decrease. And we actually have done more research on this topic. And if you want to go view it in the poster room or online in Zoom, um, there's more information on it. So a summary of the results is out of 300 individuals tested for TBI, 139 individuals, or 46% tested antibody positive. Borrelia was the most common mono-infection experienced by 59% of the group, but we had combined infections with Borrelia experienced by 29.5% of our cohort. And we had some uh, mono-infections experienced uh, with Borrelia, and that was for Rickettsia experienced by 5.75% of our cohort. So we also then have our uh, information on our cohort. So prior to diagnosis, 52.5% did not recall getting a tick bite. 83.5% went to their GP with their symptoms. However, only 51% received antibiotics. We also looked at their response to antibiotic treatment with patient symptoms improving, but they are still experiencing symptoms. So to conclude, in our cohort, Borrelia was the most predominant TBI, and it was also a mono infection. We did have combined infections with Borrelia and co-infections such as Babesia, Bartonella, Elrichia, and Rickettsia, and this was experienced by one third of our cohort. This is quite a notable result because and co infection specifically with Babesia and Alrichia can increase the severity of the illness and cause treatment failure due to their immunosuppressive nature. We also had um, some of our cohorts experiencing um, Rickettsia alone. And this is a less common infection, which could lead to mouse diagnosis. It's also an important uh, finding as a lot of patients presented to their GP with symptoms, and Rickettsia and Borrelia can present with slightly different symptoms. And this result could suggest um, that uh, Borrelia is, or Rickettsia is established in Ireland as its incidence is increasing in Europe. And it's um, important for clinicians um, to test their TBIs when patients are coming with unresolving symptoms and there doesn't seem to be any other reason why. When we looked at people or patients' follow up, they were improving with antibiotic treatment, but their symptoms didn't seem to completely resolve. And this is an area that needs further research. And we think we have some proof. So we have some posters in the post room on infection or markers of chronic infection, specifically CD57 and weekly antibody positive patients. And it points in the direction of the immunosuppressive nature of TBIs. So um, thank you very much, everyone. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to